guys, thanks for watching. We are headed back to the old mill for dig number two. The first time around, this is how I kind of do my digs. First hunt, if I know I'm gonna be able to come back and dig, I'll go through and I'll silver sniff. I will, I'll look for the high tones first. Then I come back on day number two and my focus are those mid tones. So I went back through the front yard again and this time came up with some pretty cool relics and some coins too. So before we get to that, I gotta share with you an experience. It is that time of year where people like to get dressed up in costumes and run around and beg for candy. So at my church, we had a fall festival for the kids. Hay rides and bounce houses and candy and all sorts of stuff. So we're there and all of a sudden, I hear people start laughing and calling my name and pointing out to the parking lot. And this is what I see. Now, they say that imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. But I gotta say, as good as this costume is, he just couldn't quite capture my curves. Well done to my buddy Brandon. Everybody got a good laugh out of that. I do believe that Brandon needs an original History Hound shirt though, because that taped on sign just wasn't getting it done. Okay guys, enough of that, on to the hunt. All right, guys, back at the old mill house. Very first signal. Pretty cool, some sort of old uh, makeup compact of some sort. Don't see any writing on it, but might still be able to figure out a maker on that. Pretty cool find. Let's see what else is here. Well, I had to go way under a root for this one, but it was worth it. 19, what do y'all see there? 25, 1923, something like that. I'll take that. Well, that's pretty cool. Ponds Extract Company, made in the USA. I've dug a lot of ponds lids, but I've never dug Pond's lips. That'd been a nice bright pink color. Some sort of lipstick tube. Check this out. This is cool. Some sort of little brooch pin or something. The pin's missing. That's pretty cool though. Hey guys, I want to jump in with a quick question for you. How many of you think that you could date that brooch that I just dug? Because I flat sure couldn't. I was thinking 1950s junk jewelry. And I think a lot of us would probably call that junk jewelry. Stones aren't real. There's no gold or silver on it. But I think we might want to start paying a little closer attention to some of these finds because they have something to tell us. They can actually help us date a site. So 1950s was dead wrong. That piece is older than that. That brooch is late Victorian, and it probably came from the 1890s right up to the early 1900s, the first couple years of the 1900s, somewhere in there. Now, there's a lot of different jewelry design out there, and each design represents a certain period in time. Terms that you probably heard a little bit about, Art Deco, Art Nouveau, Pretty handy to try to understand what those are and what those look like. Now, I'm going to show you two separate pieces. The piece on the left, I dug. The piece on the right, I think, was given to me by Dwayne from NWGA Metal Detecting. Now, the piece on the left looks very different from the one on the right. The one on the left is Art Deco design, and the one on the right is Art Nouveau. Now, why does that matter a hill of beans? Art Deco dates from about 1920 to 1940. Art Nouveau dates from about 1890 to 1915. So that's a little bit different uh, period of time there, and that would be pretty handy to know if you're digging up, especially several items like that. You kind of start getting the age of the site that you're digging, or if you're digging in the right area on that site. 
Now, this information, a lot of that came from Brad Johns from the Hoover Boys. I got up with him, and I wanted him to look at that brooch, and he was the one that slapped the date on it. And I wanted to say thank you. If you wanted to go learn a little bit more about jewelry design, watch his channel, Urban Treasure Hunting. He goes to thrift, sh thrift shops and uh, uh, Goodwills and things like that, and he looks for that old junk jewelry. And then he goes through it with a trained eye, and he finds actual treasure. But you'll learn a lot about jewelry design and the dating of it by watching his channel. Tell him History Hound sent you. Just wanted to pass the info along to you. Ah, oh, this is cool. I never found a key like that. I don't know what it went to. If it says something, yeah, it says something on it. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, I think. That's a cool old key. Let me clean it up a little bit more. All right, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and it says Briggs and Stratton Co. It's got the BAS Co. on the back. Something about that script seems older, though. The whole key seems older, so I don't think it's a riding lawnmower. It may be a tractor. Might have to do a little research on that. All right, guys, I was right. This is actually not for a lawnmower. I guess I was partially wrong. It's not for a tractor either. That's for a very early vehicle. Um, Model T keys look very similar to that. But I can't say that that's Model T. Maybe Model A or something like that. And that's just Basco. I don't know if that stands for Briggs and Stratton Company. I think it does. But they call these keys online Briggs and Stratton Basco keys. And there's a number which is number 42 stamped in there. And online that comes up as an OEM switch key. Guys, automotives is beyond me, so maybe some of you guys know exactly what that key was for. I'm going to guess somewhere in the 19 teens, 1920s. Let me know what you think. All I can tell you is it must have been on edge because, guys, it didn't sound like a silver coin to me. But that's what we got. That's exciting after all this time. What do you think? <laughs> well, not nearly as old as what we were hoping, but it's a silver. 1940? Is that right? I can never remember the years on those. 40 is what it looks like, but we'll check it out. It's pretty slick for a Rosie. All right, a little piece of silver getting in on the action. Guys, very next hole, we got an old knickel. Eh, fake out. That one fooled me. Ring up a little bit high for a nickel, but that's what I thought it was. It's the first one I found, amazingly. I think I've got an Indian head. Pretty sure. Did y'all see a reef on the back there? All right, coin people, close your eyes. Hmm, not getting much that way. May have to do some further excavating on it. Almost positive that's a reef. All right, well, let me do a little work on it off screen and I'll show you the result. Well, there it is. I have never seen an Indian head. I guess it's worn, just very worn. And I'm getting an 18 and I'm getting a four at the end. And I think it's an 1884. But the back is even worse. Just uh, one slap out. Not a lot of detail there. 
I am still happy to have that. It's been a long time since I found one. All right, guys, a little change of scenery. This may look familiar to you longtime viewers. One of my first permissions, and uh, I don't hunt it so often anymore. It's been hunted pretty hard over the years, but every now and again, I'll do a little swinging. And just got a coin. I just got a wheat penny. I've not even looked at the date yet. Popped up kind of nice though. Maybe we got an early one. Oh yeah, 1920. Well, that one's in good shape too. Very cool. All right, wow, I think I got a beauty. I think I got a beauty. Look at this. Wow. That's a really thin one for quartz. I don't think that's damage right there either. I like that dark streak. That'll be neat when it's cleaned up. Can't convince me that these blended colors are just an accident. I swear I think they look for pieces to try to work out of it like that. Very cool. All right, got this thing cleaned up. Check out the colors. Look at that. Cool little piece right there. Okay, that's all I got for you this week, but there is more to come from the old mill site. Not done there. And also where that came from. Gonna be checking that place out a little closer. Thanks for watching. Thank you.